Today, the Mercury Marine destination takes us up to Georgian Bay in central Ontario. Big waters produce big fish, so be ready to cover large areas. But where do you start? Structure and baits are always a key. Smallmouth bass are the target today, and they sure love surface baits. And then later in the show, muskie can be a challenge, but thinking outside the box can help you strike it rich. A surface bait that simply rings the dinner bell and a modification that is sure to grab your attention. Big water, big fish, this week on Fishful Thinking. Fishful Thinking is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Princecraft boats dominate the waters. Minn Kota trolling motors and Ram trucks built to serve. Water conditions are brought to you by Humminbird Fish Finders. Get the big picture. Big waters can blow up fast, but you can be more comfortable. Smooth out your ride with smooth moves, shock absorbing seat suspensions. Now, I've gone along here with my Humminbird. I've got side imaging. I found a beautiful weed flat that sticks out and then drops right down into deep water. And I know areas like this sometimes look like largemouth areas, but with these mischief minnows, I can cover water and get a nice aggressive bite. And I love my surface hits. So I'm just been casting this out, keeping the rod tip high, and you can actually hear that blade clicking against the body. It's a minnow profile, and it just goes click, 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 click. I catch bass on these, I catch pike on these, I've even caught lake trout on them when I put them at the bottom. But it's a, you, you, can, you can pop it as well if you'd like to, but it's a great, a, you just gotta eat it. It's a surface lure going across the surface and you can see it right here in the water. The blade's just clicking behind it, making that body shake and shimmer all over the place. It looks like an injured minnow on the surface with the addition of a blade and let me tell you, it works. It just simply works. And if you enjoy your surface hits, you gotta use these. <laughs> surface hits are so much fun. These baits, I, I love these baits. They just work. And a straight retrieve is what you only have to do most of the time. So many great colors, but that blade clacking against it. Oh, you're gonna come straight up and jump. <laughs> oh, lively, lively, lively fish. Come on. And jump right in the net, there you go. <laughs> ah, these baits are so much fun. So much fun. Another. Another fun little fish. Caught a few little guys on this already. That's getting better. Ha, nice bass. <laughs> fun lure, fun fish. And I got my spot lock on, so it's holding me off of this nice little spot here. And uh, you know, when the bite is on and they're hitting surface baits, oh, so much fun. Just enjoy it as long as it lasts. This, this spot lock with this Minn Kota is just so handy. It's an anchor. It doesn't matter how deep the water is. You can just hit spot lock on this and it holds you no matter what the wind or the currents are doing and it lets you not worry about boat control and concentrate on the fish and the fishing spots. When the wind blows, you're always constantly trying to manage. This, this does it all. It's like having a third person in the boat, a fourth person in the boat. Somebody's doing all the boat control for you. Oh, you got all of that, buddy. Small hook, so I back off the drag once I've stuck them. And there's one hook out. 
can get rid of one of them. Take that little bit, little bit. Surf you right in, there you go. You throw the hook right there, you're in the net. <laughs> it didn't, but it could have. All oh, these are so much fun. I love surface hits. Surface baits, you watch everything happen. Boils underneath it, misses, they come back. For some reason, maybe it's that blade clack and it looks like there's more than one lure there. When they miss it, they come back and crank it again. Beautiful. Thank you, sweetheart. Straight down. And boy, it is this catches the fish, it catches the net. There we go. But there's that little, there's that little blade underneath that just clacks away. A lot of times I get the hooks and the, the, the hits are the front of the bait. I noticed that when I was fishing with pike with the bigger version of this. Because the head pretty much stays straight surfing on the surface. And because that blade's hitting against the tail, it's the tail that does the wagging and wobbling. So, you know, they'll slash at it and get that back hook, but a lot of times, that, since that head's not moving, those just come up and crank it right, right there. You get a great hook set on these. Okay, boat's holding me good. Just, sometimes you gotta let the fish settle down again. There was activity, fish jumping around, the fish being caught. Sometimes you don't get a bite for a few more minutes, so don't be in a rush to leave a spot. Have a sandwich, have a drink, take it quiet, enjoy the bite. Because if you know, so many times people will catch a few fish on surface baits and go, okay, that's it, I'm moving. Let them reset back up again. A lot of times a fish like that, especially a smallmouth, you'll have three or four follow it out trying to get the bait out of its mouth. Sometimes you see them, sometimes you don't, but they're there. So if you don't give them a chance to go for a swim around here and then they go back and set up, it takes a few minutes and then they go back in the same spots again. Patience, people, patience. You will be rewarded. I can just hear that blade, clack, 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 clack. Can you see that tail just wobbling back and forth? Clack, 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 clack. You could probably hear it. If I pop it, you could really hear it. Like I said, give them a little bit of time to set back up. Since it's a surface bait, you can cast this shallow and work it right along the edges. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury. Power and dependability you can count on. Braided lines are wonderful. They're strong, they're thin, but they can be really slick when you do your knots. If you have trouble with your knots, one of the best things to do is just double your line. You double your line, even a doubled line on a bad knot is still gonna be a stronger knot. Now, one of the absolute best knots for braided lines is a polymer knot. Again, there's your double line. So you double your line, you put the double line through your swivel. All you do is a simple overhand knot. And with that loop that you've made of doubling your line, drop your swivel through or your split ring or whatever you're tying to it and simply pull both ends of the line, your tag end and your main line. And you've got a nice, tight, strong little knot there and the polymer knot truly is one of the best and strongest knots for braid you can do. The other thing I've had a lot of people ask me about, 
they see me use this 130 pound test cigar fluorocarbon for musky and pike and they go I, I just don't trust my knots with it um, it doesn't look like it tightens down right this is wonderful stuff it's great leader material but it's so stiff people are trying to do too much with their knots it's real simple put this through do a simple two wrap clinch knot no more or it's not going to tighten down back through your loop use a pair of pliers to give that an extra little oomph now if you see this sitting at a 45 degree angle like that it's going to slip that's not tight you need that tag end you need to tighten this to the point where everything cinches right up and that tag end shoots up at a 90 degree angle when it's shooting straight up like that it's not going to slip i've never had this slip in 20 years of doing this this wonderful leader material it's just don't do too much with your knots don't make it more difficult than it needs to be simple to wrap tighten it tightening it down is the most important thing and get that tag straight up at 90 degrees and you are good to go Conditions today are brought to you by Revo Sunglasses, technology that performs. Oh my gosh, you should see, I'm shaking. You should see the size of this thing. I love my surface hits, but this one made me shake. Come on up, buddy. Oh, oh. Oh my gosh, I'm just shaking. This thing's huge. Yeah, these mischief minnows, I catch loads of pike on them. I love them for bass. And when the surface bite is on, it is on. Oh. All right, all right, all right. There you are, there you are. Look at this. I don't know if I've ever caught a smallmouth bass like this. Oh. Oh. Look, I'm, I'm shaking. I'm actually shaking. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Giant. All right, you are going in the well for some pictures for sure. And we'll deal with that later. I can take some measurements of this. I think a replica's in the works. Oh. Okay, sweetheart. Oh my gosh. Would you look at this? Oh my good gosh. That is truly a fish of a lifetime. Wow. There you go, sweetheart. You ready to go. Aren't ya? There you go. Oh, talk about making it your day. This is thinking outside the box. When you see people beat in an area of certain lures, change things up. This one is actually a floating lure. I've put weights on and gave them something they haven't seen. And I'm gonna have to tire him out a little bit. Look at that. Look at that. I don't even see my lure. 130 pound test, Seaguar fluorocarbon leader. I love it, I trust it. There's part of my lure. <laughs> Holy moly. And the last thing I wanna do is take a stab at the net by myself here. 
because I don't know, I haven't extended it and I don't want it extended because I lose my leverage. Keep them away from the motor. Beautiful Lexa 400 Daiwa, silky smooth drag. I gotta trust these tired out. And when you net a fish, back off the line, back off the pressure when you're ready to net a big fish like this because when the line hits the rim of the net, all of a sudden his head goes up. You gotta, you hate doing it, but you actually gotta go, you gotta actually go, here's my slack line. You gotta go. Kind of like this. Oh. <laughs> and when you lift a big fish with a net, always the rim. You'll bust a handle. Look at this gorgeous must. Holy moly. I'm gonna get that hook out of them. Put them back in the net for, for a pitcher. I see one hook. I know where that other one is. I'm gonna have to keep you on this side. And, and you're out. And I put that one back in them. Look at this musky. <laughs> Good gosh, what a giant. <laughs> you see the size of this thing? <laughs> All right, you're going back in the net and I'm gonna get a camera and take a little picture of you, buddy. Right. As soon as you want to swim away, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go. He might stay on the surface for a bit. But he's giving himself oxygen. He's going into the wind. And the quicker I get him away from the boat and stress, the better. There's my floating lure. I have course changes the hooks a little bit to something a little stronger than usually comes with this. I've experienced that in the past where they're a little weak, so I put a stronger hook on. But these fish do not see a floating lure down six, eight, ten feet. I have taken a one ounce Freedom Tungsten worm weight and I've put a uni knot on my line and I've slid that uni knot right up tight to that worm weight and that holds it in place. That lure looks like it's chasing that little weight and I can cast this out a mile and it sinks at a perfect rate. If you're doing this with any other assortments of floating lures, play with the different weights. Uh, one ounce for this size of bait works perfect. It stays upright. All I'm doing is a straight cast out, real, real, real pause and it just does a light little nose dive. I start reeling again pause, nose dive, I'm not working this aggressively. And with that little uni knot on that line, I've left the tags on it, because if it gets a little loose, I can grab that with pliers and tighten it up. But all I'm doing with this, and I'll show you exactly how easy this is. I'm not even in a good spot right now, but I'm casting this out. I tighten up before it lands just so it lays straight. I'm just going real, 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 pause. Real, 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 pause. I'm in the weed bed now. Real, 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 pause. Real, 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 pause. I'm not working this aggressively. It looks natural to these fish. And something I have thought of trying and lo and behold, I don't think I was casting this for 10 minutes and got that giant. I just knew it was going to work. Fishful Thinking is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Princecraft boats dominate the waters. Seaguar 100% fluorocarbon. And Ram trucks 
built to serve. Tackle for the Bass, 15 pound test Seaguar 100% fluorocarbon leaders. The clacking topwater four and a half inch Freedom Mischief Minnow. Seaguar Smackdown high performance braided lines. 100% protection from UV, A, B, and C with Revo sunglasses. For the Musky, Daiwa Lexa 400 heavy duty reels with power handle. 130 pound test Seaguar Abrasics Musky and Pike Leader. Daiwa Pro-Rex Musky Rods with wind grips. Minn Kota Altera trolling motor with spot lock feature. Hummingbird Helix Fish Finders with Mega Side Imaging Plus. Designed for multi-species fishing, the Princecraft Expedition 200. The Mercury 225 horsepower, four-stroke motor. And the Ram 2500 with 6.7 liter Cummins diesel engine. <laughs> Holy moly, Henry, look at that thing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Congrats. Isn't that nice? <laughs>